Owen Lopez is in Galveston following the latest. All eyes on tropical storm Beta as she inches closer to the Texas Gulf Coast. In Surfside, roads already submerged, chunks of asphalt washed away. And in Matagorda, low-lying areas flooded well ahead of Beta's arrival. The threat of up to four feet of storm surge looming over parts inundated by Hurricane Laura just weeks ago. We can expect surface flooding in all the usual spots. The storm slowly moving in, set to hit parts of Texas and Louisiana with 50 mile per hour winds and up to 15 inches of rain. We're west of Galveston and we're already seeing high tides and storm surge and this is well ahead of Beta's arrival. The main concern is flash flooding inland. Homes already threatened by rising waters, cutting off the entrance to this subdivision in Freeport, Texas. Voluntary evacuations issued along low lying areas. What will make you leave? Total devastation. It, it would take that to make us leave. The slow moving pace of Beta could halt recovery efforts in parts of Louisiana, especially in Lake Charles. In that state alone, there are 12,000 customers without power. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Galveston. Meanwhile, our own Justin Horn is heading down to the coast right now on his way to Port O'Connor. Yeah, Justin left a couple of hours ago. So what have you seen so far, Justin? You know, guys, just some light rain, really. Uh, some, some gusty winds here and there. This is not going to be a big thing for us here in South Texas. Now, as you just saw with that report down towards Galveston, they are seeing a little bit more of that storm surge, some of that flooding. Uh, we're thinking about two to four feet when you're talking about the coast and that storm surge, how high the water is going to come up. And we're looking at a live shot here. We're driving. We're almost to Goliad, by the way, just to give you an idea where we are. We're going to work towards Matagorda Bay. That's about where Beta should make landfall a little bit later this afternoon and this evening. And I think coastal flooding is going to be the, the main threat for those along the immediate coast. Everyone else, there is going to be some rain. There is going to be some flooding rains, I think, probably east of our area, maybe over towards Houston and parts of Louisiana. But we're going to go ahead and go down to the coast, track it for you, show you what we're seeing. And uh, some of those low lying areas may begin to take on some water. A little bit of good news, it's low tide this afternoon, not high tide, so that could help us out some. Uh, but we're going to be bringing you some pictures there along the coast, along the Port O'Connor, and we'll have much more coming up uh, during the later shows. Guys, back to you. Justin, Justin, thank you very much. Be safe down there. Developing this noon, police investigating after a man was found dead in a home in Holotus. Officers tell us they were called to the 14,600 block of Marin Hollow Drive early this morning. That's near Scenic Loop Road and Highway 16. Police were on the scene for hours. They have not said how the man died and officers have not released his name yet. New at noon, a woman walking out of an apartment to find her common law husband stabbed. And now police are looking for two suspects. Police say just after two in the morning, a man and woman were walking outside of the Siegel Suites off of I-35 near Ben's Engelman. That's on the northeast side. The woman told police that two men made some flattering comments about her, and that led to an argument between the victim and those men. Police say that the woman left and went inside an apartment. When she came back outside, she found the victim stabbed. The two suspects were driving away. Police have not found those two men. The victim was taken to the hospital and at last check was in stable condition. A man facing charges after police say he punched a child and the child's mother, Hervins Pierre, charged with injury to a child. Police say last week Pierre was at home with the child and his mom. He saw the child watching a video about a game and became angry. And that's when police say he punched the victim in the forehead. The victim's mother came over to shield her son and an officer say Pierre hit her as well. Both mother and son were able to get to safety. Pierre later arrested. We have a heads up if you're driving downtown. Part of Alamo Street is going to be reduced down to two lanes. That's because crews are working on phase two of the San Pedro Creek Culture Park. Alamo Street will be two lanes between I-10 and Floorsville, rather Flores Street. This will last until early 2023. Right now, construction crews are replacing the Alamo Street Bridge. The San Pedro Creek Culture Park project consists of four phases. The park spans 2.4 miles from Guadalupe Street to just north of. Continues, and we could learn if the Alamo Cenotaph will be relocated as soon as tomorrow. 
The Texas Historical Commission expected to discuss and vote on the issue starting tomorrow morning during a Zoom meeting at 9 o'clock. The Cenotaph, which was commissioned in 1936 and bears the names of fallen animal defenders, has remained a focal point in the overhaul of Alamo Plaza. Current plans would move it several hundred feet south. Opponents of the Alamo Master Plan blasted the redesign, saying it moves the Cenotaph too far from the Alamo. The proposed plan calls for the restoration of the Cenotaph, as well as street and landscape improvements in the area. If you want to take part in tomorrow's meeting, you need to register online by 8 o'clock tonight. We've got the information to do that on KZ.com. A man is in the hospital after a cigarette sparked a fire in that man's oxygen tank. Firefighters responded to the call at an apartment complex at around 2 in the morning in the 100 block of Andrews, which is near North New Braunfels. They say the man who has COPD was having a cigarette next to his oxygen tank. The cigarette lit the oxygen on fire, then the chairs caught on fire as well. Firefighters say he injured himself while he was trying to get out of the apartment, but it wasn't from the flames. He was not burned. He's currently in the hospital. A driver smashes right into a home on the southeast side and then runs off. That's according to police who tell us that driver lost control, crashed into the home around 1 this morning. That home was in the 3000 block of East South Cross, a block away from Highland Hills Elementary School. Officers are still looking for the driver responsible. You know, sometimes one game or one play can change a season. We just might have seen that play during the Cowboys game yesterday. We'll have it for you in just a few minutes in sports. And some common household items may be the reason for all those visits to the veterinarian. Coming up next, what items could be poisonous to your animals? Every year, the Animal Control, rather Animal Poison Control Center, receives more than 200,000 cases concerning potential poisonings of pets. Many of those involve common items found in your house. Sarah Costa tells us about some toxins that pet parents need to watch out for in their home. With their sniffing snouts and mischievous mouths, pets are always putting the strangest things in their mouths. A sock. A uh, dead lizard. A tampon. <laughs> But did you know some everyday items and foods could be downright dangerous to your pet's health? Raw bread dough is an unexpected poisonous hazard for dogs. The yeast cells produce ethanol, which can quickly raise your dog's blood alcohol level, causing alcohol poisoning. Avocados are mildly poisonous to cats and dogs, but can be deadly to horses, birds, and rabbits. Medications count for just over 37% of calls to animal poison control centers. Ibuprofen, cold medicine, antidepressants, ADHD medications were the ones most commonly ingested by dogs, followed by heart medications. These can cause difficulty breathing and vomiting in cats, and liver failure, dry eye, and red blood cell injury in dogs. Huh? That was Sarah Costa <laughs> reporting. Pet products that you buy from your uh, vet also uh, could be dangerous to your pets. They accounted for nearly 10% of calls to animal poison control. Some pets may overindulge on medications thinking that they're treats. Gotta be careful. Yeah, we were just trying to figure out how a horse would get a hold of an avocado. And I'm thinking they would probably just break through a fence and get in their garden. Uh, yeah. I would peel it though. <laughs> Just chomp right in those teeth. Chomp right in. Get through, right? They yeah. rain on the camera. Yeah, out there, I, what huh? are we looking at? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a very gray Monday here in San Antonio and across much of South Texas. Things are going to stay a bit cooler and rainy at times today, of course, because of Tropical Storm Beta. But we will take even just a little bit of rain while we can get it. The aquifer is actually down six tenths of a foot today. Need to update this part of the graphic and in the pollen counts. This is correct. Mol no, this is not correct. Ragweed is the only moderate allergen today. Mold and fall elm are low. I'm sorry, I'm going to fix this and uh, we'll get you the right pollen count coming up after the break. Ay, ay. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV.
Yeah, our Justin Horn, we just saw him headed down to the coast. We know they're going to get a lot of rain down there, but what about us? We're just getting kind of misted. Yeah, kind of some light rainfall. There are some pockets of slightly heavier rain, but really what we're going to see for the most part, light off and on rain continuing today. So it's not going to add up to much, but at least the cloud cover is keeping us it is in cool. Yeah. 60s right now. So Ooh. that's nice. And I do apologize for those not updated graphics. Here's the correct aquifer level. It is down six tenths of a foot to 663.6. And here is the correct pollen count. Ragweed moderate today. Everything else is low. With the moisture around today, we could see mold jump up by tomorrow. Here's a look at Doppler radar. Not terribly impressive. Of course, we've got a ton of cloud cover out there. Clouds all across South Texas. Uh, but we've got a couple of showers here from Oakland Estates down to uh, Balcones Heights there in 410, even down to 151. A little bit of light rain and a couple of sprinkles up to between Bulverde and Blanco and we've got some more spotty showers pacing in from the east motion today is going to be around the circulation of beta. So these showers are generally going to move in uh, from the east and move off to the southwest today. A uh, pocket of rain there uh, south of Pleasanton down Highway 37 and uh, just some showers out there not even picking up on any lightning strikes. So uh, light rain out there. We are picking up on some light rain at the airport still north wind at 14 miles per hour. Our temperature now below 70 degrees and it's just a gray Monday and things aren't going to change much this afternoon and this evening. I actually bumped down our high temperature for today closer to the mid 70s. Uh, I do think it'll be pretty difficult for us to warm up much this afternoon. Skies will stay cloudy and we'll hold on to a chance of some off and on light showers for the rest of the day and even into tonight. And of course, this rain is pacing in around the circulation of tropical storm beta latest update as of 10 AM maximum sustained winds 50 miles per hour. That's actually down slightly from where it was yesterday. Movement west, west northwest at seven miles per hour. So Beta is not expected to strengthen really at all before landfall. And the reason why, see all this orange here and red? That is some really dry air. There's a lot, lot more moisture around the center of circulation of beta, but it has been pulling in some drier air essentially all weekend long. And so that is what has kept it from intensifying and ramping up to hurricane status. And actually that works out more in our favor. A more disorganized tropical system will toss rain a bit farther out. If it's more organized, that center of circulation tightens up a bit more. The rain stays more concentrated closer to the center. But since it's a bit more disorganized, it is doing a better job of tossing us some rain here in San Antonio and across parts of the KSAP viewing area. So this actually works out better in our favor. Uh, but of course, if you're down near the Texas coastline, Rockport, all the way up to near the Galveston area. You've got the tide situation um, and then some storm surge issues as the center of circulation nears the coastline. So landfall is expected later today, probably sometime late this afternoon, early this evening down near Port Lavaca and Palacios. A very, very slow movement will continue into Tuesday. So look, 24 hours from here to here, this thing is really going to pump the brakes even more as it moves inland late tonight. That will continue to produce some heavy rain over parts of southeast Texas, and then what's left of this system will drift northeast by the middle of the week. So the big time rainfall totals the flooding rain that is going to be well to our east closer to the Houston Galveston area and even into portions of southern Louisiana. Uh, but look at this rainfall gradient, how it falls off. Some of our easternmost counties, Lavaca County, DeWitt County, Goliad County. You guys are looking at the highest rainfall totals over the next few days. Can't rule out a few pockets of three to six inches of rain in and around Hallettsville down to Quero. Uh, but again, those higher rainfall totals up to near half a foot. That's going to be well to our east here in San Antonio. We're looking at between a half inch to an inch of rain as some of these light showers continue to pace through uh, today and into tonight. So we'll hold on to a decent chance of some light rain today by tomorrow. Rain chances really start to wrap up. We'll have a decent chance of rain first part of the day, but by Tuesday afternoon and evening, a lot of this rain will start to clear on out. So if you're a fan of the cloud cover and some cooler temperatures, enjoy today because often all night showers will be possible for the rest of the day. But by Tuesday afternoon, I think we'll even start to see a little bit more sun there and warm back up by the end of the week. Guys, we'll keep an eye on it. Beta, the governor's just uh, made it uh, declared a disaster there. All right, we'll watch it for you. All right, coming up next, the Cowboys dig themselves a huge hole and dig out of it thanks to a crazy play. We've got that, and the Texans continue to struggle. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm.
Mike McCarthy, the Cowboys at home in AT&T Stadium. 21,000 fans in the stands. That's because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Not a lot, but you can still hear some boos early on. That's because the Cowboys put the ball on the ground four times in the first 15 offensive plays. Dak Prescott fumbled once. Zeke Elliott fumbled twice in the first quarter, and the Falcons took advantage. They put up 20 points off those turnovers, including this 42-yard touchdown pass from Matt Ryan to Hayden Hurst. Anybody there? Where's, where's the defense? Atlanta up 29 to 10 at halftime. Cowboys found some rhythm in the third quarter. Prescott fakes the handoff, takes it himself. Two-yard score, 29-17. Next drive, Prescott off play action going deep. Watch this catch from Mari Cooper. Reach out that one hand, grab it. Ah, sweet. Hauls it in. Huge 58-yard gain. That set up Dak for his second rushing TD of the quarter. It's now 29-24 Atlanta. But the Falcons respond. Fourth quarter, Ryan hits Russell Gage in the back of the end zone. Eight-yard touchdown. Falcons score 10 straight to go up 39-24. Dallas keeps fighting. Prescott scores another QB keeper with 149 left to play to make it a two-point game, 39-37. So you have to go for the onside kick. Greg Zerline puts some serious spin on it. It curves upfield. The Falcons just stand here and watch it. Goodwin comes in and jumps on it. Cowboys recover. Jerry Jones is thrilled. Dak takes advantage. Hooking up with rookie wide receiver C.D. Lamb. That's a 24-yard gain down to the 30. Zerline comes in to kick the game winner right down the middle. 49 yards. Cowboys come back and win it after being down 20 nothing. 40 to 39 is the victory. It almost felt unreal, you know. You know, with the start that we got off to, came out flat, turned the ball over three times, uh, weren't really focused, weren't really, uh, honestly, I don't know. We, we we didn't get off to a good start, for, but for us to, you know, persevere and uh, come back from that huge of a deficit with that uh, bad of a start, um, kind of unbelievable. It's just getting the, getting the group together and saying uh, the worst of the worst has happened. I don't know if it can get any worse than, than the way we started off, but uh, the future is always better than the past. So just focus in, focus in on our job, uh, do our 111s, don't do too much more, uh, and don't do any less than that. Um, and it'll all come together. It's a young season. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're early in the, in the process of our football team finding out about each other each and every day. So it, this is just a, this is a big chunk of confidence that we'll, we'll carry forward. Now that defense needs some confidence. Russell Wilson had a great game yesterday. Cowboys take on the Seahawks up there in Seattle. 325 is a kickoff next Sunday. How about the Texans hosting Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens in their home opener. First quarter, 3-0 Ravens. Houston going forward on fourth down, deep in their own territory. Didn't work. Incomplete pass. Ball goes over four plays later. Jackson finds Patrick Picard. That's a one-yard score. It's 10-0 to Ravens. Texas respond. Deshaun Watson finds Darren Fells. He gets in. That's a 10-yard touchdown. Down three after another Baltimore field goal. Texas beginning in their drive again. Watson to Kiki Kuti. He is hit. And re fumbled, recovered by Marlon Humphrey. He scores from LJ Fort. It's 22 yards for the touchdown. The only bright spot Houston was... J.J. Watt, two sacks. That is his 26th game with more than one sack, the most in the NFL in the last nine years. And he has 69 games with multiple QB hits. That's the most in NFL history. Here's your final. Not good. 33-16, Ravens over the Texans. You always want to get points, but with a great team like that, you got to score points. Um, you got to get touchdowns. And, and that's the thing that we didn't do today. And we, you know, it's a great learning lesson. Um, you know, for us to be able to look at the film, correct those mistakes. And we start off slow, uh, put ourselves in a hole, and try to dig our way out. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a tough sled there at the end, and got to find a way to get a, a victory. That's what, it's, that's what it's come down to. Not going to get any easier either to find that victory next week. It's the Steelers at home, or at uh, Pittsburgh at noon. And the UTSA Roadrunners have started their season off 2-0, thanks in large part to the play of Frank Harris. The junior quarterback has been dynamic, making plays with his arm and his legs. He has scored seven touchdowns in just the first two games. He's got a couple through the air, five on the ground. He racked up more than 370 yards total offense in Saturday's win versus Stephen F. Austin. Frank credits the team for his success. I think the play calling has been great. Um, Coach Lundy does a great job letting me go out there and uh, play with my arm and with my feet. Uh, he gives me the green light to go out there and just have fun. Coach Trella as well, he, he, he does not let us play timid. 
and just go out there and just have fun. So I give all the credit to them. Uh, I don't feel any stress. I think none of the guys do. Uh, we just go out there and have fun with our, with our brothers. I just look at the uh, upcoming schedule this week. Middle Tennessee taking on UTSA Friday in the Alamo Dome. That's Friday night at 7 o'clock. Mark that one down. In Texas and Texas Tech open up Big 12 play Saturday at 2.30 in Lubbock. And Vanderbilt travels to Kyle Field to take on Texas A&M. That's Saturday at 6.30. Two things trending yesterday was a wacky onside kick and Dak Prescott's Cowboys hat. I so like, the like the cowboy hat. hat. Did you like that hat? Yeah. That was pretty sharp, didn't it? I bet you Jerry Jones liked it, too. I bet he did. He needs a ranch now. Still ahead on the news at noon, the world's largest retailer doing what it can to tackle climate change, how it plans to reach zero carbon emissions from its global operations. And the rush for a replacement for it. Late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is brewing along party lines. The intense debates between both parties as to when a new nominee should be named. Next on the News at Noon. The battle over a replacement for late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has taken over the national headlines. Intense debates now brewing over party lines as to whether a new nominee should be named before or after the November election. ABC's Andrew Dimbert explains that Biden and the Democrats say it should be after the election, but President Trump and the Senate Republicans want to move on it now. With early voting already underway in some states and the death of iconic feminist justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the wheels are in motion in the Republican-controlled Senate to fill the vacant Supreme Court seat before Election Day. The move energizing both conservative voters. We're going to fill the seat. And Biden supporters who don't want the seat filled until Americans make their choice for president this November. Don't go there. Uphold your constitutional duty your conscience. Let the people speak. Just four years ago, Republican leaders were vehement in their opposition to a president picking a Supreme Court justice in an election year. In 2016, the court vacancy came more than seven months before the election versus a month and a half this time. Let's let the American people decide. After blocking President Obama's hand-picked justice, GOP leaders vowed to do the same even if a Republican were president. And Opening comes in the last year of President Trump's term, and the primary process has started. We'll wait to the next election. But now, with the Republican president, the party reversing course, moving ahead to fill Ginsburg's seat possibly before Election Day. Senator Lindsey Graham says all bets were off the table when Democrats tried to block Brett Kavanaugh's appointment to the nation's highest court, tweeting, Chuck Schumer and his friends in the liberal media conspired to destroy the life of Brett Kavanaugh and hold that Supreme Court seat open. But Graham continued to vow not to confirm a justice in an election year, even after Kavanaugh's confirmation hearings. Democrats gearing up for what could be an ugly political battle. We have our options. We have arrows in our quiver that I'm not about to discuss right now. The fight sure to be a focal point for voters, as is the COVID-19 pandemic, which has infected more than six and a half million Americans and left almost 200,000 dead. And back to that Supreme Court vacancy, the president has yet to name a nominee, but said today that he will announce one either Friday or Saturday and added that he's committed to picking a woman. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Meanwhile, overseas in Germany, the German health minister is aiming to push for additional safety measures to fight COVID-19 as the fall season approaches. The minister described various options, including what some call temperature ambulances. They are locations where those with COVID-19 symptoms can get on-the-spot tests. He also discussed providing additional fast testing options. So far, more than 270,000 people in Germany have been infected with the virus, and nearly 9,400 have died. Meantime, Britain's chief medical officer, Chris Whitty, says the country's turned a corner on COVID-19 infection rates. But that said, top medical advisors in the country are painting a grim picture of exponential growth in infection and death rates if nothing is done to control the second wave. Prime Minister Boris Johnson met with ministers over the weekend to discuss how the government there should move forward with the recent rise in cases. 
Back here in the States out west, fire crews continue to battle raging wildfires that have already claimed at least 36 lives. In California, fire officials say it could be more than a month before the Bobcat fire is fully contained. That fire is burning near Los Angeles and it has grown to nearly 100,000 acres. The fire so intense it sparked a smoke NATO whipping rocks and ash as it tore across the forest. Flames still inching within a few hundred feet of Mount Wilson. That's an observatory and also home to Southern California's TV towers. Still to come this hour, Oregon seeking a break from flames and smoke, enabling some residents to check on their homes. However, rain later this week could bring more landslides to burn out terrain. Live look outside with live cam. We've got a misty drizzle. That's it what is, we're going to call it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. It is gray out there today and things aren't going to change much even this afternoon. And the cloud cover and the light rain will help to limit our temperatures in most spots to the 70s for this Monday. Well, it's not going to last forever, though, and it's all dependent on Tropical Storm Beta. Beta inching closer to the Texas coastline this afternoon. Landfall is expected later today as a tropical storm. The system really doesn't have much time at all to ramp up anymore, so we are expecting a tropical storm at landfall down near Port Lavaca um, and uh, Palacios, Texas later on today. And of course, we'll let you know when that happens. Temperature wise in and around San Antonio and Bear County sitting near 70 degrees. But look what's happening off to the west. A little bit of a break in the clouds here. That's bumped your temperature in Hondo up to 82. It's 80 uh, in Castroville, but we still got plenty of cloud cover and even some light rain that will continue to stream in today from the southeast because of tropical storm beta. So overall today uh, looking at a pretty cool day for us here. High temperatures should jump to the mid 70s here in San Antonio. Uh, light showers will continue to be possible even this afternoon as the kiddos are heading home from school. Winds north 10 to 20 miles per hour. It'll stay fairly breezy today and even into the day tomorrow. So a great start to the work and school week. Rain will start to wrap up tomorrow. We'll see a little bit of clearing on Tuesday and very warm later this week. But fall is coming. Maybe not like total fall like temperatures, but the fall equinox is coming uh, within 24 hours. We're going to talk about that and take another closer look at radar coming up in just a bit. Ursula. Thank you, Katie. Once in a blue moon, you'll catch a rare scene in the night sky. You're going to want to look up soon. We'll tell you why. And a big night for Hollywood with groundbreaking victories during the Emmys. Some of the night's biggest winners coming up in the spotlight. My grandmother would approve. Another cleaning product can be added to your arsenal. Oh. Why Pine Sol just got approved to kill the coronavirus on Ooh. surfaces. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Hello, everyone. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar. Twitter is looking into a tool they use to generate photo previews to figure out why it favors white faces over black ones. This comes after several Twitter users found an apparent bug over the weekend, highlighting examples of when the network favored faces that were white. Meanwhile, Foot Locker now helping voters get a leg up on the election year as the athletic retailer joining forces with Rock the Vote to transform their stores into voter registration hubs. The registration sites include Kids Foot Locker, Lady Foot Locker, Champ Sports, and foot action locations. CEO Richard Johnson says the plan is to inspire and empower youth culture. And after a fiasco weekend for PS5 pre-orders, PlayStation took to Twitter to apologize for the chaos surrounding their newest console. Over the weekend, several retailers prematurely launched pre-orders for the consoles. The company tweeted, let's be honest, PS5 pre-orders could have been a lot smoother, and for that, we truly apologize. And the to Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. In your consumer news, Walmart, the world's largest retailer, announcing a series of green goals, which in the next 20 years, Walmart is aiming to reach zero emissions from its global operations. It also plans to power 100 percent of its facilities with green power, such as wind and solar energy by 2035. The company plans to restore or protect at least 50 million acres of land and a million square miles of ocean by 2030. Here's some good news. The EPA has approved Pine Saw Original Cleaner as a product that can kill coronavirus on frequently used services. 
The product meets the criteria for the use against the virus. A third-party laboratory tested pine saw and found it can kill the virus within 10 minutes of being used on non-porous hard surfaces. The Clorox company says customers should apply full-strength pine saw with a clean sponge or cloth on a surface, wait 10 minutes, then rinse. Hey, on Halloween, you want to look up at the sky because it'll be lit by a blue moon? This will also be the first blue moon in the U.S. since March of 2018. Despite its name, a blue moon is not necessarily blue. And the one you see this Halloween likely won't appear to be blue. The term blue moon is used to refer to the second full moon in a calendar month that happens once every two to three years. So why do they call it a blue moon? I don't know, David. Ask the scientists. <laughs> Katie's a scientist. On Halloween. That's Why do they call it blue moon? You're a scientist. I, I, I don't know. I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, I thought sure. that if it was yellow, it was a um, cheese moon or something. And it ties in like the harvest moon and uh, yeah, things like harvest. things like that. So I'm not I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'll look it up for you though. Okay. Thanks. Get you an answer. Get you, that, you know, you talk to the right person. Kate, <laughs> Katie's got her eyes on the sky. Yes. Uh, the aqua bird down six cents of a foot over the past 24 hours to 663.6 in your pollen count for today. Ragweed is our issue. Mold is low, but it could jump up tomorrow because of the light rain that we have around today. Another look at radar and an update on Tropical Storm Beta coming up. Well, welcome back. Well, after such a beautiful weekend, what a big change today. Overcast with some light rain pacing on through and we have tropical storm beta to thank for that. Of course, beta is going to cause some big coastal flooding issues well to our southeast and maybe even some localized flash flooding issues over closer to the Houston area. As we get into the day tomorrow, I do want to check on radar well to the west. It looks like we've got a couple of very light returns there well to the north of Del Rio in Valverde County. But for the most part, the rain that's that you can notice and that's showing up on Doppler radar uh, is along and east of the I-35 corridor. We've got Got some nice showers pacing off to the southwest down in Atascosa County, even down into Live Oak County as well. Even as far north as San Marcos and Austin, some shower activity continuing to pace on through. This is really just going to be some light to moderate rainfall. Unfortunately, it's not going to stack up to very much over the next few days. But in the meantime, for today, it's helping to keep us a little bit cooler. We're sitting near 70 degrees here in San Antonio and up in New Braunfels, a bit warmer off to the southwest. Some breaks in the clouds and not as much rain. That's allowing temperatures to climb into the upper 70s, even in the low 80s across some spot, some uh, parts of the area. Our winds are getting to become a bit breezy. Our sustained winds are around 10 to 20 miles per hour, 18 miles per hour in Hondo right now, 16 miles per hour in Victoria. And as you can probably imagine, the higher wind speeds, the higher wind gusts will be down closer to the coast as we get into today and tonight as the center of circulation of beta makes landfall later today. But we are picking up some gusts here in San Antonio around 20, 25 miles per hour. And we may even see a couple of gusts this afternoon and evening up closer to 30 miles per hour. So little gusty at times, but overall just breezy and a little cooler gray out there. Almost kind of a taste of fall for us today. So here's how the rest of your Monday will play out some off and on light shower activity possible with clouds hanging around temperatures maxing out probably just in the mid 70s this afternoon. So kind of a taste of fall. Uh, fall actually officially begins tomorrow morning at 8. 30. That is the autumnal equinox and that marks the start of the fall season. But unfortunately, I think we're going to get a bit warmer tomorrow. Still a touch on the cooler side. Temperatures below average, but look what happens the rest of the week. The first few formal days of fall, we'll see our high temperatures jump back into the upper 80s and near 90 as we lose the cloud cover and as tropical storm beta moves away. So here's the very latest on beta. We're going to get a new update here closer to one o'clock. Don't expect a whole lot of change. Beta is not expected to intensify at all before making landfall later today. Movement is fairly slow, just seven miles per hour and maximum sustained winds are just up to 50 miles per hour. So again, this west northwest movement will continue for the rest of the day today. Landfall expected late this afternoon, early this evening down near Port Lavaca, and then the system is going to slow down even more tonight and tomorrow hanging out in southeast Texas uh, through late Tuesday into Wednesday. So it'll continue to dump some pretty heavy rain off well to our east closer to the Houston area, and that's where again there could be some flooding issues as we get into tomorrow. For us here in San Antonio, we're going to continue to see some light shower activity today tonight and into the first part of the day on Tuesday. But as beta starts to kind of pick up and move northeast second half of the day tomorrow, we will see our rain chances gradually kind of taper off there. Maybe even a little bit of clearing 
by the end of the day on Tuesday and the rest of the week. It'll be warm again with highs back near 90 guys. Still not sure why they call it a blue moon, but the Marcells had a big hit back in 1961. Yeah, Mike didn't it. know either, so, so we'll have yeah. to. Get if Mike Osterhage didn't know, then nobody <laughs> knows. <laughs> True. A show about a small town with a memorable name makes a big splash at the Emmys, winning more trophies than any other comedy shows done in one night. And boy, did they deserve it. I'm just going to put it out there. Details coming up in the spotlight. A Hollywood Awards show like none we've ever seen before. The 72nd annual Emmys took place with Jimmy Kimmel and a few select celebrities at LA's Staples Center and everyone else at more than 100 different locations. One sitcom broke a record scoring the most wins ever for a comedy series. We can't say the name, but it does have the word creek in it. The show won the first seven awards of the night. Our boss told us we can't say can't the name of the show. Can't but ABC's Will Reeve has more. Welcome to the Pandemies. From the opening monologue to the end credits, the 72nd Emmy Awards were unlike any other. Jimmy Kimmel running the show from an empty Staples Center in L.A. You know what they say, you can't have a virus without a host. Awards delivered to winners by people in hazmat suits or via remote controlled <laughs> box. That's a little extreme, Jimmy. You never know where these accountants' hands have been. Okay. As always with live TV, viewers could expect the unexpected. Sanitized for your protection. Yeah. Now this is exciting. Put it up. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> we are delivering Emmys live. Including what's surely the first on-air award show COVID oh, test. Right. But nothing could change those emotional reactions. On a night of groundbreaking victories, Succession and Watchmen had strong showings in the drama categories. But the biggest story was the clean sweep in comedy. Holy cow! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, this tent's on fire! Creek creators and co-stars Eugene and Daniel Levy making history as the first father-son duo to take home trophies on the same night. It really comes from you know, this young man here who I think has infused his DNA into the show in terms of what the show actually stands for and what it actually says. I think it's, we've been very lucky. We've been very lucky to have a cast that's as strong as it is. We've been very lucky to have a team of, of writers who are as strong as they are. Um, and this show is, is a collaborative effort in every sense of the words. Also last night, 24-year-old Zendaya taking home lead actress in a drama for Euphoria, the youngest winner in that category ever. How does the reality of your success <laughs> that you've had in so many areas match up to what you dreamed it would be when you were younger? To me, success has always looked like being able to do what I love to do um, and continue to be happy doing what I love to do. And, gr and thankfully, I get to live my dream every single day. Amid the global pandemic and in the final stretch to the U.S. presidential election, winners use their moments of glory to address critical issues facing the world. Go to Ballotpedia.com and find out who are voting in your municipal elections. It is very important. Be a good human. Rest in power, RBG. I stand here tonight to say thank you to all of the people who are celebrating and know the value of every patch and every story and every color that makes up this quilt that is our business. Through it all, there were some classic award show gags, like Jennifer Aniston barely making it home to hear her category with the help of some friends. Of course I'm here. We live together. You do? Uh, yeah, we've been roommates since 1994, Jimmy. Is this live TV? Or the cast of Little Fires Everywhere trying to end 2020 three months early. Now that's a good idea. <laughs> Why didn't we think of that? Could we do that? Uh, I guess not. Hey, we're going to start as a live right on time, though. We're going to say goodbye to summer and hello fall. That's right. The temperatures are helping us. They're kicking off a week-long celebration of fall, right, Mike and Fiona? Yes, indeed. Of course, we are getting ready for fall with our own fall festival right at home. And we're also getting our gardens ready and kicking off National Dog Week with homemade dog treats with fall flavors. It's all today on SA Live. Now, you don't have to miss out on carnivals at fairs this fall. We'll show you how to transform your backyard into your own family festival. 
and Mike and I will even put our carnival skills to the test. I'll win you big stuffed animal if we have any out there. Hey, have you started your fall garden yet? Do you know what you should be planting? We head to a family-owned nursery where they have the expert knowledge, everything you need to know. And move over National Dog Day, a rollover. We're celebrating National Dog Week, and today we start with what every dog wants, the treats. We'll show you some easy recipes you can make for your best friend today. And we're also revamping lunchtime for grown-ups and the young ones. Why not let your lunchtime be a real escape? How you can pack a lunch you really love and a fun project that you can do to de-stress. Plus, if the kids are getting bored with their afternoon meal, we have a, we have three ideas for a brand new lunch they're gonna love. Yep, and anything you miss about summer, that's coming up on SA Live.